Hi, thanks again for stopping by to watch my latest video. I'm finally going to get around to building this Tamiya VBX, which has been sat up there in my to do pile for the last nine months while I've been doing the SRV restoration on the two Rangers and the paint video for the Sand Scorcher. So, yeah, I'll bring you over and just show you what I'm going to do with it. For the first time, I'm going to be using a brushless motor which is perfect for this new BB01 chassis, which it's designed to take. So I went for the TBLM 02S 15.5 turn from Tamiya, hoping for an easy installation. That's why I've gone for this. TBLE 04SR speed controller with built-in cooling fan. These will take LiPo. Hop-up wise, Got the slipper clutch set, aluminium front uprights. I also grabbed the swing shafts, but I think they're the same as what's already in there. So I'm gonna to to check that out. And aluminium servo stays. I'm also going to fit the spare tire on the back, which doesn't come in the kit. So I've bought a complete set of tires and spare rims as well they might come in handy so let's see how it goes so the first step is building the ball diff and before I build them I always give them a clean with methylated spirits as you can see from this tissue there's quite a lot of dirt comes off the parts so I think it's really worth doing before putting these together so that's been tightened seven complete turns like the manual says but just to check you can put a little spanner in like that and allen key like that and lock the two together and then if you can't turn the wheel then it's nice and tight or the gear so that's good feels nice and smooth This is the first time I've installed a slipper clutch, so I've tried to lay it out in a methodical fashion. Now, there's step three, um, and there are the bits you need, which I have laid out just there. There's the ball diff built earlier, and there are the parts that come with a slipper clutch. So there's the instructions for that. Now it tells you here, attach slipper shaft to gearbox in place of main shaft which is that part there. So essentially you don't need those bits, but you do need one of the one of the bearings because in the kit there's only one bearing. So over here in place of that part there we're going to build that bit. Put that bit in. So there are the two 1050 bearings installed onto the slipper shaft. So step four is putting the gearbox together. I've got the bits and pieces laid out here. Just thought it's worth mentioning when building the gear in number three, it asks for these little spacers, A15, two of them, and they're on a A parts tree. So you've got to cut those out, little plastic parts. And, um, oh yeah, one other thing, if you're not putting the slipper clutch in and you're building this shaft here up, it asks for MA29. Now I remember when I built the TD2, TD4, I couldn't find it, it took me ages. Finally found it and it's this little bit here and it's on a little plastic tree. 
and the little washers inside it. So that is MA29 if you're not doing the slipper clutch. Okay, so just about to close up the gearbox, thought I'd show you. So there's the bit that gets replaced. It's that gear right there, the top one. Pretty simple really, but again, I've never done it, so. This feels really solid, really quite chunky and heavy. Very compact as well. Plastics feel really good quality as well. So now onto the second step of step five. So I've already done that bit there. Pretty easy. Now instead of installing this here, we'll install this. She's on the slipper clutch instructions, and there they are. Now interestingly, that gear there that comes in the slipper clutch is also supplied down here. It's the same part number, but I will use the one out of the slipper clutch set. So I'm going to attempt to put this together on the on camera. So we've got these pressure plates. It says in and out. Um, in is the first one, which is thinner, and out is slightly thicker. See, like the hat side of it. So that goes on first. only goes on one way, it locates on the pin. Now the tricky bit will be getting this, these little clutch pads on. The other side. Gonna hold that with my finger. So now it's saying, okay, I need one of these flange tube. There's two of them. They both look the same. And it goes in. And then the spring. And then the little top hat goes in there, or flange tube, and then the nut, tiny lock nut. Now the instructions again say fully tighten, then loosen by four turns. So I'm assuming you end up with that 4.8 mil measurement there he goes I think I would call that fully compressed I'm gonna Loosen by four complete turns, so one, two, three, four. So now we shall measure this dimension here, make sure it's 4.8 mil. We measured the distance between the end of the nut and that bolt and it was actually four mil not the four and a half that it recommends so I wound it in a bit more to get the 4.8 I think it was about another turn maybe um, and then I use my gauge so that's near enough 
happy with that. Step 7 is now completed with the motor and gearbox installed onto the chassis along with the urethane foam pads that need to be cut and stuck to the front. So you've probably noticed that the motor's out. The reason for that is I was looking at the instructions and noticed that the supplied pinion gear in the kit has a gear ratio of 12.42 to one. And the instructions for the motor, if you look at the chart buggy for that 5.5 turn motor, it should be between 8.9 and 11. So I've decided to go right in the middle of that and go for a gear ratio of 10, which back to the chart says you want a 22 or 23 tooth pinion gear. Now to confirm this, because I'm not sure on all this stuff, I called Jason at True Vintage, thanks Jace. Um, and he said, yeah, you need to have the right pinion, otherwise you'll do damage to the motor and ESC and all that. So, I've ordered those from TTP models in the UK. Should be here in a week. Step 13 finished. The Savox 12.52 low profile servos installed with the optional spacers to adjust the height and just under here. The aluminium servo stays are on there as well. Just making up the steering rods. Step 18, putting the right hand side of the roll cage together, you need to get some synthetic rubber cement to glue a small flange tube, which is made of metal into the plastic. So this bit here is the battery on off switch. There's another little bit there. You have to screw in and there's a nut the other side of it. First part of step 19, installing the right hand side of the roll cage. And the second part is just installing this front right upright. Twenty and twenty one are the same as the previous page, pretty much just putting the left hand side of the cage together and installing that on the chassis. There's also this centre support here goes in. Step 
Step 22 is installing the ESC and the receiver switch and then putting the battery access door receiver in and then the pin for access. Step 24 is painting the driver figure and then installing it before you can install the some more parts of the roll cage but so far I've only managed to get these primed. Uh, it's raining, you might be able to hear the water running and the humidity is high so I'm kind of waiting to spray those so I may have to jump forwards to carry on with the front suspension. So here's the driver helmet ready to spray silver. I've just masked off the face with some blue tack and taped the underneath where I'll paint the black. Um, before priming it, I sanded out the join. Step 25, front upper arms are on, nice and straightforward. You just have to make sure when you're pushing the, the balls in to the arms, you have to push them in from the correct side and there's some little uh, dots here that are on the plastic and I've put them on the underneath side. I don't like to see them um, You push them in from that side, but I don't actually use pliers like it recommends because I hate to see any witness marks on the plastic or the metal So I just use like a plastic chopping board and press against that push it put the ball on the board and then push the arm onto it and it clicks in nice and easy without doing any damage to anything Step 26, attaching the hop-up front axles. Just paying attention to the additional instructions because you have to thread lock the bolts in. So I built the shocks and put the oil in. I'm just waiting for the air bubbles to sort of rise and I'm on to step 28 where you have to do a bit of drilling. Um, the first thing is the caps to the shocks. You have to put a little one millimetre hole in the top so that the air can get through and you can bleed them. Um, I've already done it. Now, see that hole there you have to put a screw in after you've bled it, but you have to put a little tiny one millimetre hole in there um, so that it passes through that and to check it I sort of put, put my mouth on there and blew through it but it was really gentle not to drill through there because it would be scrap essentially. Um, you also have to drill the front holes of the suspension arms I'm assuming so that the bolts will pass through the first bit here and then they bite into there as they self tap because they don't go in at the moment. So I've just got a brand new three mil drill and I'll drill those out. Just remember, don't go all the way through to the other side because the screw's not going to bite. So the shocks are pretty much finished. And just before I put them on the chassis, I thought I'd just show you what they look like. One with the spring, one without. I've set the preload to 10 mil, that gap there. It doesn't tell you in the manual. So a bit of trial and error, I think.
This has had four coats of TS17 gloss aluminium. I've been painting it whilst doing the shock absorbers and front suspension. Four coats of TS29 semi gloss black. Again, ready to hand paint the detail. And there's the steering wheel done. Back to step six, the pinion gears have arrived. It took a week exactly, as always. I think I'll put the 22 tooth one in. Thirty one, thirty two, thirty three is building the rear shocks, which is pretty much identical to the fronts. Um, I did see there is a dimension for the preload on the rear, it's seven. Now, I did say previously on the fronts I couldn't find it. I don't know why I couldn't find it because it's right there and it's 15 mil. So I've been back and changed that. I've also added three O rings to the, to the shocks because this is supposed to help and stop the swing shafts from popping out. Before starting the rear arm assembly, I just wanted to mention something I've noticed. Now, there's a few steps here involved um, and I wanna put the optional shims in the back in a different position. Now on the, you're a good couple of pages back before you get down to here. And I've noticed there's an optional position. So the standard position means that you put these two washers in after you've built the arm back on the previous page and you put them there but then down here it mentions putting them either side as an alternative to stop the swing shafts popping out i've heard this is worth doing so in order to do that you really need to get the first one in back on the previous page so up here so it would go in here right so I'm going to do that little thing there. Um, I'm also putting the hop up um, swing shafts in because they're made of carbon steel. So they're supposed to be stronger. Steps 34 and 35, rear right arms. In the sheer excitement, I did the left hand side first. Forty and forty-one wheels and tyres, and that's where I'm going to leave this video. The buggy's looking excellent. I've installed the tyre on the back spare. It's a pretty sizable unit compared to like a standard one tenth scale. The next video is going to be paint decals, finishing the driver figure, and a little bit of a run. So if you want to see what colour I'm going to do this. Come back in a few weeks and uh, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.